Thanks for joining us. This is Nick McPhee, and in this video I'll go over how to install and use Dr. Racket. I'll also provide some tips for success in this and many other courses. Like most meaningful things in life, you get better at problem solving in general, and computer programming in particular, by doing it. You can read all you want and watch endless hours of videos, but ultimately you have to pull out the keyboard and try it yourself. This is true for most skills of consequence, and you've almost certainly had some sort of experience where you know that practice and repetition were key to your success. Obvious examples include sports and playing an instrument, where repeated skills, drills, and endless scales can be a valuable part of developing the technique needed to really excel. In this course, we're going to be learning the Racket programming language using an environment called Dr. Racket. Success here will absolutely depend on using Dr. Racket as much as you can to experiment with Racket and the ideas and exercises in the course. We have Dr. Racket installed in the Computer Science, or CSI Labs, and we'll take multiple field trips there in the early weeks of the semester. That's your lab, and those are your computers. You paid for them, and you're welcome and encouraged to spend as much time in the lab working on this material as you want. If you have your own computer, you can also install Dr. Racket there as well, and I'll walk through that in this video. After looking at installing Dr. Racket, I'll also go through some simple examples of using it that apply whether you've installed it on your own computer or are using it in the computer science lab. Feel free to skip the installation part if you're using the CSI lab, but come back in for the examples afterwards so you can try them in the lab to make sure that you're able to get things to work there. Regardless of whether you use the computer science computers or work on your own computer or some combination of the two, the key is to keep practicing and getting better. Try as many exercises as you can make time for. You will get stuck. Everyone does, including me. Don't let that get you down. Take a deep breath and look for some assistance. You can ask questions or come visit during any of my open chat sessions. The class is full of cool, helpful people who can give you a hand. Study groups are awesome. And there are tutors available through the Student Success Center in the library. You are not in this alone unless you choose to be. Don't just do exercises, redo exercises. Think of them like scales for the piano or skill drills in sports. This is how we get good moving the easy stuff so that it becomes automatic, leaving your big brain to focus on the really interesting parts of the problem. Take advantage of the great people around you. One of the biggest strengths of UMM is the wonderful sense of community. Take a deep breath and introduce yourself to the people around you. See if people would like to form a study group. Ask another person for a hand. Offer to help someone who looks a bit lost. We're all in this together. Embrace that truth and then do and redo some more exercises. Now we'll actually walk through installing Dr. Racket. Remember, you do not need to have a computer to succeed in this class. You can always use the computers in the computer science labs. Dr. Racket is free and available for all major platforms, so it will almost certainly work on whatever computer you have, if you do have one. I'm going to demonstrate installing Dr. Racket on a Mac, but the process is essentially the same on a Windows computer. If you try this on your computer and run into snags, definitely let me know as soon as possible, since we'll want to get that resolved as quickly as we can. We'll start by going to racket-lang.org. This is racket-lang.org, the homepage for the Racket programming language, its documentation, and it's where we can download tools like Dr. Racket. Note that the current version as of the time of this recording is 8.10. Anything after 8 will be fine for this course, and there shouldn't be any issues if your version differs slightly from the version in the classroom or in the computer science labs. To install Dr. Racket, click the download button in the upper right. That takes us to the download page, which will try to determine what kind of system we're using and offer us the appropriate download. Note that it correctly figured out that I'm on a Mac OS computer. If it doesn't seem to correctly determine your computer, 
feel free to use the drop down and select the correct platform. Then click the button to download the installer. That's a .dmg file in my case. It's probably a .exe file if you're on Windows. Depending on your network connection, the download might take a minute or two. When it's completed, you'll want to find out where it downloaded the installer. It's probably in your downloads folder, but the details might depend on your browser and how you've configured your computer. Once you've found the installer, double click it to start the installation process. The details will vary from one operating system to another, but you should be able to just accept the defaults and it'll do the standard thing, which is probably what you want. After you have Dr. Racket installed, you should be able to start it up by double clicking the Dr. Racket file that's in your Applications or Programs Files folder. The Windows installer may have also placed a Dr. Racket alias on your desktop or dock. If so, you can click on those to start Dr. Racket. If you're in the lab, look for the Activities button in the upper left. If you click it, you'll get a search box. Enter Dr. Racket in that search box, and you should get the Dr. Racket application. Clicking on it should start it up. From here forward, I'm going to assume you have a working Dr. Racket somewhere, probably either on your computer or in the computer science lab. If that's not true, stop and let me know. We want everyone to succeed in this course, and that's only possible if you have access to a working Dr. Racket installation somewhere. If it is true, however, then let's go ahead and do some simple examples to make sure everybody understands the basics of interacting with Dr. Racket. When you first start Dr. Racket, it has two panes or panels. The top pane is called the definitions pane, and this is where we'll type our computer code, which in this case will be a collection of Racket definitions. The bottom panel is the interactions pane, which we can use to type things we'd like Dr. Racket to evaluate. That makes Dr. Racket quite interactive and flexible, kind of like a superpowered calculator. I can, for example, add two and three by typing in the interactions pane, open paren, plus two, three, close paren, pressing return or enter, and finding, big surprise, that two plus three is five. Don't worry about the weird business with the parentheses and putting the plus sign first. We'll go over that in more detail soon. As a more complex example, we can use the definitions pane to define two variables, length and width. These are essentially just names for values, allowing us to provide readable and memorable names. So up in the definitions pane, we'll type open parenthesis, define, length, and some number. I chose seven, followed by a closed parenthesis. Using a similar pattern, we'll also define the name width to have the value five. Now we have two names, length and width that have been defined to have particular values, seven and five, and I can then use those names, length and width, elsewhere in my program, and they will be replaced by the values that we've used to define them. Don't worry about the details here. We'll go over this a lot more carefully in class. We can then press the Run button in the upper right to tell Racket to evaluate all the definitions in the definitions pane. If you've just installed Dr. Racket for the first time, though, there's a good chance that it will complain that you haven't chosen a language. Dr. Racket actually supports a number of different flavors of Racket, as well as some other related languages. If you go to the Languages menu and select Choose Language, you'll get a dialog with a number of options. We'll start off with the Beginning Student Language, which is in roughly the middle of the list. Select that and click OK. It should then show beginner student, beginning student, down in the bottom left. It'll probably be highlighted in some sort of highlight color as a way of saying that you've just changed the language and need to click Run for that change to take effect. So let's click Run. Yikes! Angry red words! Welcome to the world of working with computers. They're very picky and complain about all kinds of things. The key is to take a deep breath and read the message you get back. Hopefully it will tell you something useful, providing a clue about what the problem is and how to fix it. But not always. If you get an error message that you don't understand, 
That's a great thing to ask a question about. If you ask a question via email or in some electronic forum, make sure you provide at least the relevant part of your code and the whole error message. In this case, you'd want to provide at least line one, where we define length, and everything that's in red down in the interaction pane. Reading this message, it's telling us that the name length is already defined somewhere, and we can't redefine it like we try to do in line one. It's common for languages to have special keywords that we're not allowed to define or redefine, as well as words that it would be really bad to redefine. In the case of Racket, the name length is used to determine the length of a list of items, and it would be confusing to other Racket programmers to redefine it to be something else like a number, as we've done here. In full Racket, we wouldn't actually get an error here, but one advantage of choosing the beginning student language is that now we get an error, making sure we don't make that beginner mistake. What then do we do about this? We could just change the name length to something shorter like Len or even L. L is a terrible name, by the way. It looks like a one and a capital I, bad choice. But either of those choices is removing meaning and value from the names. Can we add value instead? I was thinking about these as being the length and width of a rectangle. So we could add that piece of information and change the names to rectangle length and rectangle width. Now click Run again and see if that fixed the problem. Huzzah! It did! Although rather quietly. There's no you fixed it message, which is pretty typical in computing. If things worked, systems are often largely silent, saving their voices for the shouting bits when there are problems. So here, the fact that the error message went away tells us that all is well. How can we further convince ourselves that everything worked? We can click in the interactions pane and type rectangle dash length at the racket prompt, which is the greater than symbol, and then hit return. Just like it told us that two plus three was five before, now it tells us that rectangle length is seven, as we defined up above. We can also ask for the value of rectangle width and find that it is five. What happens if we enter a name that we didn't define? Let's try frog and see what happens. Yep, more red error messages, but we were kind of expecting that. And the message is pretty direct and helpful. Frog, this variable is not defined. Note that we get the same error if we ask for the value of width. We have to use the full name, rectangle dash width to get the value that we defined on line two up above. Now let's do one last example before we wrap this up. Let's go back up in the definitions pane and add open paren define rectangle dash area to be, instead of just a number now, we'll have an expression. Open paren asterisk, which is racket and, and most computer languages symbol for multiplication, rectangle dash length, rectangle dash width, close paren, which closes the multiplication expression, another close paren that closes the define expression, and then we're done. That defines a new name rectangle area to be the product of the length and width of our rectangle. And the way we compute the area of a rectangle is we multiply the length and the width. If we add that and click run again, then we can ask the value of rectangle area in the interactions pane, and we find that the area of our rectangle is indeed 35. And now just for fun, let's change the values of the length and width and make sure that the area is recomputed correctly. So let's change the length to say 11 and the width to 20 and click run again. Now we can ask for the value of rectangle area again and voila, it's 220 like it should be. That's enough fun with Racket for now. Remember, we all get lost and confused at times. Sometimes it turns out to be just some little thing, and sometimes it's a more serious kind of stuck. Don't let that get you down, and definitely ask questions if you run into problems with any of these things. 
It's especially important that you address any of these first three issues, installing Dr. Racket, logging in in the CSI labs, or using Dr. Racket in the CSI labs. Because if you don't have a way to use Dr. Racket, then you're basically toast in this class. It's like being in a chemistry class, but where you can't get into the chem lab to work with your partner. Definitely not good. Moving forward, be sure to ask for help at any point. If you don't understand something in class, can't get an example to work for you, or just got stuck on an exercise or an assignment. This is going to be a great experience. We're going to look, learn some cool things in this course. It'll feel really good when things click, and even more so when you've struggled to get there. Make sure you have a place to work with Racket, either in the computer science lab or on your own computer. Be open to working with your peers. One of the greatest challenges and opportunities of college is the ability to find people who will take the journey with you. Decades after I was a student, I still remember vividly suggestions, ideas, and assistance I received from my fellow students. And there's no question that they were as, an, as important a part of my education as the very excellent faculty that I had at the time. Buckle up, it's time to hit the road. And to give credit where credit is due, all the funky little cartoons were created using Bing Image Creator. Thanks for watching.